Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor, and I've got here the A8 3D printer, a huge 3D printer with a big build, heated build plate, and all come for $150, $200, depending on when you get it on sale. It sounds too good to be true. It is too good to be true. <laughs> Hey everybody, so thank you to my friends at GearBest. I finally have the Anet A8 3D printer, a 3D printer kit that costs anywhere from $150 to $200 depending on when you get it. And my friends at GearBest would love me to tell you, yes, run out and get this right now and use the affiliate link in the description because you should do it right now. But I have to be honest, you know me, I'm not going to try and lead you astray. And this experience is great, but it's not for everybody. If you are a kid, if you are somebody who just wants to do 3D printing, that just wants to throw 3D print files at a 3D printer, this is not the 3D printer for you. It took all day, two days, before I got this to a printable state. And if you go to twitch.tv slash 3D Printing Professor, you can watch the first hour of me putting this together, most of which involve me taking the, uh, the stickers off of the uh, acrylic cup parts. But regardless, even within that first hour, I already ran into a problem with the kit. They, they had sent me the wrong connector. They sent me the UK connector, and of course, I could just get an adapter, but I'm not going to have this big clunky adapter on here. So I went out to the hardware store, and I got the right one, but then the right one had different colored cables at the end. So I had to do some research and learning and figure out what the different colored cables mean so I could put the right ones in the right place. So now I've got uh, a, a plug that I don't need in addition with all the, all the other extra parts that I don't need. But you know what? I love extra parts, so I don't feel bad about that at all. But even after you get this 3D printer all together, even after that second day when I connected everything and it ran, it's still not done because its initial state is just the bare minimum to get it going. And you're going to want to print upgrades afterwards. Already, I've printed upgrades uh, for the X cable, ignore that, <laughs> the X cable, the Y cable, uh, the, the fan shroud I've changed, and I've got this really cool little cover for the, uh, for the computer component parts that I've modified, of course, with my own uh, logo on there. Now, I love this aspect. I love the aspect that you are making this your own, and the adventure of putting it together, I really enjoyed. I don't feel bad about that at all, but I have to be honest. If you are not ready for this adventure, then I can't recommend this printer to you. But if you are, you know, putting this together kind of reminded me, it felt a little Wild West, you know what I'm saying? Like a little bit rough and tumble, but I was the one fixing it. Except it's not. It's more like city slickers. Because every problem you run into, somebody else has already run into, and you can go look at them. It, it feels like rough and tumble, but in reality, it's actually a very safe environment where you can try and learn and grow on your own. And so for that, it was fantastic and worth the time and effort that I put into it. And at only 150 bucks or 200 bucks, if you can't catch it on sale, it was totally worth it. And now I've got a 3D printer that can print bigger than any of my other 3D printers. So I'm happy to have that. Now, after I got this all together and got it to a state where it was printing, oh, and I should mention, don't ever print the upgrades for this that you're going to be doing in PLA. Uh, I use PET. Get yourself a high temp plastic. I don't recommend ABS, and I've printed an ABS for years. I'll do another video about this another time, but I recommend PET or a high temp PLA, and I printed them in black so it looks professional. I wanted this to, to look good. Um, but yeah, this is an upgraded part. This is an upgraded part. And I, I've got, I'm going to keep upgrading this. I, I kind of went through this with my Rep 1 before. Uh, when, I, when I got it, I, I had to fix something and upgrade it. They're telling me that I'm going to want to upgrade that power supply sooner or later. So, okay, I'll, I'll take care of that one day. Um, and eventually, maybe after a year of owning this, I'll have it to a point where I don't need to upgrade it anymore, where it's ready to go right now. And for only an initial an initial investment of 150 bucks, that's not a bad deal. But you are getting a hobby, and and I'm doing more printing of upgrades for this 
than I am doing prints with it. Now, uh, I after I got this thing up and running, I didn't want to have to deal with. Uh, I, I, I want to keep this out in my garage after this shed or after this uh, video. This is going out in the shed, so you know I don't I don't want to have to be running back and forth with the SD card on here uh, and and slicing things. I wanted to have some system for sending prints to it wirelessly and thank you to my friends at printer who have sent me the element i love the green glow on this thing i feel like i'm, I'm lex luther and, and this is a block of kryptonite it's really really a cool system and by hooking this up to your 3d printer via the usb port you have now connected this printer to the internet of things it is now a web enabled device and you connect to it through their website, through Formide, uh, that has everything you need. Let me show you that really fast. So here is the Formide website. And uh, you can see here under, it, it's got my ANET A8 already connected to it. It recognizes that it's there. And here's a library of models that I put in here. Here's a little Simon Pawn, a little chibi version of Simon that I'm working on for another project and I tried printing it out. And I'll talk about that in just a second. Here's the Royal Game of Ur. And so all you have to do is click on Slice with any 3D model that you upload. And it's just a drag and drop to upload it. Um, and you go into their slicer and they've got all sorts of settings here. They make it very simple. You can just say, go ahead, slice, done. But if you're not satisfied with the way that it slices, you go into the advanced setting and actually you go into override settings and over here you have the ability to change all of the settings. I, I find it interesting that the layer height for the bottom and the top and the middle layers are set in different places. Can we make thicker top layers and bottom layers? I have to experiment. It's a very different slicer on the Formide website that I'm used to. And the final result that comes out of this slicer, well, I'm gonna have to be, I'm gonna have to be playing with these settings in order to really uh, be satisfied with them. But once you get them saved, you just save the settings and then you can drop down and choose the settings that you want. So I've got this set for 150 microns and three layers on the bottom, uh, six layers on the top, and lo lots of different things. You can alter the fan. It's it's super cool and it's super um, responsive and does everything that you need it to do. And then once you finish it, you hit slice. And then once it's done slicing, you add it to the print job and the print starts at the click of a button on your computer, which can be far away from it because the the element is connected to the internet and you're connected to their website and so they send that information through to your printer. And that actually is kind of the downside about this, situ uh, about this system. See, because the element needs to be connected to the computer and your computer needs to be connected, or say the element needs to be connected to the internet and your computer needs to be connected to the internet and setting it up was super easy. It's got a little wireless adapter on there. You connect to the wireless adapter, tell it this is my Wi-Fi password and now it's connected to the internet uh, at any time. That wasn't a problem. That was perfect. They nailed this. But there have been times when because my internet wasn't good, I wasn't able to start a print on my ANET A8. So in order for this to work, your internet needs to be strong. Their website needs to be strong. Just, just throwing something online automatically creates a ton of new fail points. And it's, it's just something that you're going to have to deal with. Now, if you're in a place where your internet is strong and you're not going to worry about that, this is a great solution. And because I didn't need to do any setup and because it really wasn't that expensive, in my opinion, this is in some ways superior to Octoprint or other print systems. Now, I, I, I know I might have just stepped in it right there. So if you're willing to if you're willing to do it yourself on your printer and you're willing to do it yourself on your Octoprint, then good good on you. Go for it. And I'm not going to tell you not to do that. But if after doing everything by hand on your 3D printer, you want an easier solution, then the Element by Printer is actually a really good solution. Now I do have to admit that the that 
formide slicer leaves a little bit to be desired. Here I made some chibi Simon pawns, and this is the first one that I printed, and it looked terrible. Now this was also with the default filament that they had, and it was before I had really dialed in the settings. So I dialed in uh, not just the settings, I also tightened the belt on here, and the second one came out slightly better. I decided to see if maybe it was the slicer. So I took this third chibi pawn and I printed, I, I sliced it in Simplify 3D. And without changing anything else, without changing the printer or anything, the print came out magnificently better. It just works so much better with a good slicer. So now I, I do want to jump back over to Formite here for just one second. You'll notice here I've uploaded G code to the Formide library and I can just really quickly hit print. It was seamless for me to slice it on my own sl slicer and bring it into Formide. Now this is a web app so there is very likely the chance that they will continue to upgrade their slicer as time goes on and it will only get better and because it's a web app you will get those upgrades just as soon as they come out. So while I wasn't super impressed with the Formite slicer, there's an easy way to go around that and I can still start prints from the comfort of my home while the printer is on my internet far, far away. Now, there is one other thing I want to talk about. I told you just by changing the slicer, Simon came out looking much better. But by changing the filament, I switched to this 3D Mars filament from my friends at 3D Mars. And I, a lot of times when I talk about PLA, I'm a bit glib about it, honestly. I'm like, I, my, my response is, yeah, good PLA, it's like good pizza. You find it anywhere, it's not that difficult to find, and you really don't ever sing its praises. But the truth is, while this is PLA, and I don't get very excited about PLA because it's a low temp plastic, the detail, the difference from the one created with their sample filament, which was just cheap, bad filament, and the one created on, on Mars 3D filament. I don't know if you can see the difference on here, but in real life, oh my goodness, the detail level, just the fact that you can see my logo in the back of this one, the 3D Mars PLA filament is good PLA filament, and it really, to me, demonstrated the difference of using cheap bad filament even with a good slicer on a good printer and using good filament this really made a huge difference in the print so i i think i think i can recommend 3d mars film and it's not any more expensive than any other filament i'm happy i thank my friends at 3d mars for sending this to me because it's it's good pla and i'm going to be using it to print some more boards for the kickstarter well, that's it, guys. I actually have one other thing that I need to talk to you guys about, but I will save that for another video. Uh, what I'm using for the print bed to stick prints to it is a, is a product that I'm a little bit excited to tell you about uh, that's showing some, some real promise, but we'll do that another day. So I want to thank you guys very much for watching. If you are interested in any of these things, I'll have affiliate links in the description so you can support my channel if you want to do that. But that's my opinion on the ANET A8 the Element from Printer, and the 3D Mars PLA filament. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. As always, remember, safety first. I'll see you next time.